Good afternoon and most welcome to 751. And the introduction here is from the late St. James John or Jämnesjön in Västra Gufia, West Gifia. It's quite a chilly day, but we are lucky enough there is no wind. Absolutely none. So if you stand still, you don't get cold, which is quite amazing. And it's also pertinent to today's lecture. It will be about how to get from ST2, that is neurons 2 and muscles 2, T2, and be going over to ST1. That is neurons one and muscles one, T1. It might look simple on the surface, but it's far from that. Because we are, as Heidegger would, would call it, uh, it thrown into the world or in thrown into the world we are already here and most of us us without a doubt are st2 and we already used to coping with the things in our world our life world by using st2 so we are accustomed and another aspect is aspect is we usually say that we live in a trigger for world. Uh, that's usually called the information society. Maybe a bit more correct to say that there is this lot of stimuli going on in our life world. And that stimuli can be rather complicated things. Remember people used to in Stone Age live in not that referential complication that we see today very hard today to fathom and ST2 is really the worst when it comes to understanding complicated things. As soon as everything gets a little bit complicated it disappears from view. It blocks out and it doesn't do its job. It can hardly do its job but it will do it even worse and that's a big problem because if you want to have a development Every time you go to your chore, as soon as it's rather taxing intellectually or complication-wise, maybe filling out your tax form or just driving around downtown, the ST2 will be triggered. And it will remain so for some time after the happening, maybe until you fall asleep. And this is the actual complication. This is why nobody gets better. Because if they get better for some reason, maybe they take a vacation, come back, feel rejuvenated, maybe already started to getting over to SD1 a little bit. That will happen in the vacation. Uh, they are bound to have their own, they, their old stimuli put them right back to SD2 within a week or two. So what will you do? Well, here you have to be very, very, how could you say, not go over to one area too much, not the other. Although it might sound fantastic that just pop over to SD1 that's not at all a good solution because what you need to learn is little by little going over in the chores the things you are actually doing during the day in this situation first the, ex the expected situations but then also the unexpected 
that's usually where the problem starts. The, the way to go about this is a little by little and going back and forth. What you should do and um, the way to go about things is to train a little bit every day so that your system gets a little bit more into the SD1 mode. And then you do your chores. You will go over to ST2, but for every day a little more of SD1 will remain and it will take longer and longer for SD2 to take over completely. And in this slow and process there will be a learning of the new chore but by doing it with SD1 instead of SD2. And that would not have happened if you wait for a, uh, went for a vacation for a year and came back all in SD1. Your chores would still trigger you and you haven't trained doing the chores, the tasks with SD1. You've been on a vacation. So it must be a slow process and it should be a slow process just because you need to do your things. You are already in your situations, you are already in your doings and there is where you need to relearn. And this argument uh, reminds me, I think I got the idea, it's not completely the same, but it's there's some similarities, and about, that was the critique of Jean Du of the Alexander Technique, and how he and in a congress show that they are using artificial situations, and when he took a teacher out of a situation, asked him to do something unexpected, and I think it was going backwards he completely failed. The point from Jean Du is if you learn good use but you don't do it in the situations you don't learn it properly or rather you don't learn it at all really. The only thing you, you do learn is to perform in certain situations. Those situations are good for another purpose. Those situations are very good for getting the system into balance. And that you keep that reservoir of balance when you go into your chore. So that is the use of that thing. But it's not supposed to be the end. It's halfway. And that's a lot of damaging thing in the Alexander Technique. They do things the wrong way. They want people to perform in class or in the lesson to utmost perfection. The more the better. It's not, it's not like more is better here. It can get too much. It will get too far from a common experience of living. And there you have completely lost it. So rather what does the trick it's a little and there are two three more aspects why it should take its time but this is maybe the most pertinent it needs to be trained in the action situations it's not a balance only in body and mind body, mind and environment and that's extremely important. How can you forget about environment? Well, 
if it doesn't cause you any problem, uh, think of Alexander, he always put it in a situation, he was doing things, reciting, socializing, understanding people, teaching people, doing things, never outside. He never used it for sitting in a chair or getting out of a chair. He used it for his daily living. There it where it's supposed to be placed. Eventually, in the end. What we want to avoid, however, is that we trigger uh, the SD2 mood too often, too much, especially the first six months. Once you get more balance, you could do it more and more. And if you get really skilled, you should actually, should actually turn the system out of its balance. But it's different steps, and the steps cannot be confused. And that's largely ignored within the Alexander Technique. And it's also completely ignored in normal therapeutic sessions for treating these situations. There's no understanding it needs to be stepwise. And we're lacking that understanding, it's a complete lack of all understanding. It's not a half understanding, it's no understanding. If you don't understand that there are steps and some understanding should not come early. That will ruin the system. You could, as an example, remember example from Jean Piaget, where the baby grows and it develops, it does it in step. And one of the reasons it does it in step, it can't do it anywhere other way, because the brain, the cognition is growing at the same time. But when it comes to grown-ups, it's a whole other business. We can do it in wrong steps so easily. And that's an, a very big problem. So you need to go about this in a very easy manner. So let's see, with the new training, uh, method three, speciality, you have 40 minutes training, for instance, with very slow action. Together, with a verbal memory, verbal counting, performed with exactness. The slow moment and the verbal memory, internal memory, will slow down both muscular groups and neural groups. By thinking slowly and carefully, mind won't rush anymore. We know when we do counting repetitive uh, words the mind slows down. The more complicated they are, the better it is, the more the mind slows down. We don't want to stop thinking. We want to slow down the mind. And that's very two different things. And once you start with this development, you will understand the difference between thinking and mind. They are not at all the same. And confusing them, I would say, is very typical for ST2. Once the training is done, you are in a more balanced situation. You are now more in ST1. Now you want to bring that over to the task, the chore. And slowly when doing the chore, ST1 is going to disappear and will you go back to ST2. Little by little, vigilance will come back in very small doses at the beginning and after a while more and more. This will happen and it should happen and that's the normal way of going about. You do it little by little 
almost like you're training muscle groups when you're at the gym. You don't train them all at once within a week. You take long time. And in this case, you have to take even longer time because you are going to change neurons and you are going to change habitual patterns that are really ingrown. One could note here three clear benevolent factors that we play at the same time when you do this thing. Going from some sort of practice, taking 40 minutes, to the work at hand. Uh, the first one, the system will not be as triggered as before. So your thinking when you do your task for in incomes, your income declaration, income tax, task, tax declaration, you won't be as triggered, alarmed, you will not be blocked out or zoomed out, which is usually called these days. You will be present, you will be able to perform. The performance will be better. And that's an important thing. Since you are in a more balanced state, the performance gets affected. It's very important to remember that. Because later you will also understand it. But we know this to be a fact. It's never the same before training and after training. Never. And that's extremely important. The second is sort of a side effect. A better outcome would lessen the vigilance because part of the vigilance is, as I said, we live in the world. And it's actually the things around us that caused us to happen to come to ST2. So there is a good reason that we are in ST2. And usually is that when we start doing something, the lack of skill feeds back into the system. I say, when you are in ST2, it won't be as good. And it doesn't matter if you consciously know that or not, your system will know. And it, that will trigger the system. And if it's really bad, it will trigger deeper lying layers of the system. For instance, the amygdala or something like that. And that will cause even more vigilance. This is what we see in stressy situations today. People are stressed because they're not performing well. Not as well as they could. The system noticed that and we don't consciously know that because we use outward measures for what's working. Those outward measures are a killer here. We need to get inward measures when you can accurately sort of measure your skill level. Changes all the time. You need to learn this. This is part of the feedback process. Vigilance, should we remember, is a survival function. And if you drive the car not to the optimal, it could be triggered and that will lead to that you go over even more often to SD2. The third part could be divided in two. Uh, more and more, uh, the first part of the third part, uh, 3A, first you will learn to perform without activating SD2 to the same degree. You will notice that you can trust the system more and more because it's a lack of trust also. You get a feeling it's not working when you go into the process slow with SD1, therefore you start with SD2, you get the impression it's working better from a conscious per perspective, but it's actually working worse. You need to remember that you have two consciousness, and both of them are constantly registered, but the unconscious are registered much more, and it doesn't matter if you're conscious of it or not, it will still affect you to the same de degree. It's the same if you have a leaking cellar. It doesn't matter if you sit in the kitchen not aware of it or you're aware of it. Sometimes I hear people say, well, I'm not aware of it. Doesn't matter. It has, has no effect whatsoever if you're aware of it or not. 
you are unconsciously aware of everything. That's what matters. That's also what affects the system. That will affect the system much more than the conscious control or the conscious lack of control rather. And now comes the important part in 3A. And you will notice your creativity goes back there. Because SD2 doesn't create any creativity to speak of. It's very repeat repetitive. Because it doesn't see reality. SD2 is made to help you flee from a dangerous situation. Nothing else. It won't help you with complicated tasks. Its business is to don't see complication. For ST2 everything is very simple. Everything is black and white. And that's a safety measure as well as a saving measure. It needs to save your mental energy from seeing too much details and also safety mechanism because you need to escape, you need to flee. I think you can realize now how unfitting it is to have ST2 in a modern society. To say it's counterproductive doesn't even cover it. It's worse than that, it's actually causing the problem from the beginning. We got to remember that ST2 is both symptom, but it's also cause. If we would have known from the beginning how to do these things, how to use ST1 in complicated situations, if, for instance, the schooling system would have taught us to remain balanced even when we do stressy things, which is the most important training, not to be balanced when we're relaxing. That's the second most important. First important is to do balance when you are stressed. And that needs to be learned when you still are in a balanced state, when you are young. Not when you already acquired ST2. Because everything you do will trigger ST2. It triggers of everything. It's a trigger mechanism that triggers itself. So now the real stuff is kicking in. ST1, you will be more creative. What you do will be better in quality. And you will also be more creative. And oddly enough, less energy will be put in, into play. Remember that ST2, the both systems there, demands a lot more energy. It's a lot more taxing on the system. They take sugar, they crave sugar, it makes you also sugar craving. Whereas the proper ones take fat that are slow and not consumed that much. So that's the second part, when you notice less energy is being put into action. That will go for easier doings of things, be softer, more elegant, more coordinated. And here's the important thing, not only to enjoy that, but to notice this. The noticing system is start, starting to kick in after two months, I would say. Once that happens, it's a feedback that goes into the mind as well, not only corporal. You get consciously aware of these things and you will be able to steer in that direction. So you are investigating a completely new area, your inner world and how it affects the outer world. Is that relationship. When you are in ST2, there is no possibility you can understand that. It would be a waste of money to try to learn it. You need to see it yourself. 
one every sort of change in your mind and body system will change reality this is more and more you get into that more and more you will see that that's a feedback that helps to heal the system and you understand now once you start realizing with a difficult task with a difficult task of living surviving coping doing things if you start understanding st1 is better at that when your bodily understands it the whole system would steer in that direction if it's good for survival the whole system will accept it otherwise we just think that st1 is more relaxed more refined coordinated but you don't get all the benefits therefore you will try but not enough and I'd say that lack of intention, that lack of reward, won't be enough for most people. The internal system needs to be motivated. What could be better motivation than that your future will perform better? And that performance will constantly get better. And this is where we start trusting the system. I heard somebody say, I wish there was a better way to do it. Uh, he was talking about some complicated business and I told him, it's better that you relax and let things happen by themselves. And he didn't believe it was a better thing or doing it. The system needs to understand that. And trust me, there's no surgeon on this earth that does it in that complicated way. Like stressing and start to think, as we people used to say, they start to think hard. And that takes a lot of energy and they look uh, like they are tormented somehow. That is ST2 and there is no, I hope there is no surgeon working under ST2. Because you lose your skill, you lose your ability to think. And I think that's another very important point. As long as you think you can actually think in ST2, you are deluded. And you will notice more and more that there are no thinking at all going on in ST2. That's pure gut feeling that uh, serves you in that case. Kahneman called that S2 if I remember that right. It doesn't think, it cannot think, it's not supposed to think. It's a flight and fight response. And there of course are no surgeons, microphysicians, dentists even, who are using this when they're working. They wouldn't be able to. But you can do a half good job. You can still be working in an office with SD2 on full alert. Because the precision is not enough. This is why this procedure is so important. You need to have great precision so you can have feedback. It's not only for performing better at work. Maybe that sort of precision is not even needed at work. But you need it for your own sake. I, put, I think this has got a little bit comprehensive actually. We covered most. I have some details. I, I think I'm going to do a recap instead. So what you do is you start by practicing. You balance up the system. You get a reservoir of balance and you waste. You don't waste it but you use it like you have gasoline. And maybe you have two feelings a day, one in the morning, one at night, which is preferably. And actually have a small refill midday somewhere. Most countries they have siesta. And you let the system do its job. And when you start developing, when you've done your, done your, done your practice, you do it slow. 
you do the verbal counting, you do imagery also, I will put that into the picture, uh, imagery that I have spaci spaciousness, to get in space, because we are very compressed, compression is both mental and physical. And once you're starting that, you get that into the living day, the working day, you bring little less stress with you back home every day, a little inkling, and when this process starting to get noticed, this is where the thing is, start notice this process, and then you will further it, and then somewhere we start noticing that your mind is different all the time, because ST2 doesn't allow any knowledge of mind or thinking quality. That comes later, once you start to experience that every time you change your mind, reality changes, and there's a quality difference. And then you will understand that you cannot work well with ST2. So maybe your, all your long-term decisions are uh, not so very good, or half good, but you can still do office job or teaching job or something like that, but you won't be satisfied. And then you will realize this is caused by ST2. And then you will realize you've only been guiding yourself with gut feeling, intuitions, and that, that won't hack it in this complicated reality. Uh, it's like uh, my lawyer friend said to me, 95% uh, of the population are useless to make a court job because they are trusting their feelings. We need to think. And we don't think anymore. And they don't even know what thinking is. It's this mysterious process. SD2, they use this gut feeling and then calls it thinking because it feels so black and white and it seems to be the same thing everyone else is doing. But trust me, it has nothing to do with thinking. Those areas in the brain are not even lit up during this process. So there's hardly any choice of that. It's just terror <laughs> and you will understand also it's a special background feeling that goes with SD2 it's more gloom uh, the world is more frightening it doesn't have to be super frightening and I would say this is the reason we have all this like black blackish terror movies this idea of doom or that the world is going under, and why not, yes, uh, apocalypse is coming close because we had snow today, or something like that. This doom, this weariness, everything is getting destroyed. This is the worldview of SD2. It has its own worldview for obvious reasons. It's flight and fight. I will repeat it again. I would say some dystopian 20s movies uh, maybe add a little bit of Lord of the Flies and sheer terror, darkness and evil people. And when you're an SD2, other people are evil, they're not good to you, they don't treat you good. They always have a purpose. But after going into the process, you will see how SD2 sort of don't see reality as it is cannot it's not supposed to be and in this in in this aspect it's very similar to the left hemisphere and it's not exactly the same as the left hemisphere but in this aspect because it doesn't leak, let you see any of reality it just projects and it's a big different difference between projecting and actually see see what's at hand and do you understand the difference now? If you're supposed to do some complicated ta task like handing in the uh, income tax declaration, that you don't know what to do. And therefore you need to see the world, you need to see the declaration. But SD2 doesn't allow you to do it. It just chances. And that's the difference between understanding and just doing things by chance two very different things. Well, we have a rather beautiful sky here to be... Oops. 
Well, I get back to this rather intriguing subject and I say thank you very much and a very pleasant afternoon.